They claim it's the one tool that can do everything. Well, let's find out. So this is a very interesting tool. Now this was sent to me by a subscriber some time back and I do apologize up front. I can't remember who it was that sent this. I had, I'd, I'd set the letter aside and I, I'm sorry. So come forward and, and claim your prize if you were the one that sent this very interesting tool. So what we have here is we have uh, basically an, uh, an Oz. How do you say? A-D-Z-E, an Oz uh, with a couple of different interesting features. It's got a nail puller in it and a smasher or a waffle type of hammer. Now I looked around, I, I had never seen anything like this before and I looked around online and I did find something and the best I can tell that this is probably something for maybe a so, an older Soviet design, uh, something to aid in carpentry where you could kind of grab it and do lots of different things. You could use it as an Oz, of course a nail puller, um, a pry bar, lots of, lots of different tasks. So as it came to me, it didn't have a handle. Uh, and it, but it has been sharpened. Someone took a lot of time and put a nice edge on it and kind of cleaned it up. If I had to guess from what I, what I saw online, this is probably kind of maybe a little bit lower budget or, or a cast of the original, maybe a replica if I had to guess because the original ones look like they were forged. This one seems to be cast and I don't, I just don't know yet. We'll have to, we'll have to try it out and find out. So before we could test it, we needed a handle. So I, I went on the lathe and I put, uh, got a nice piece of hickory here and I created a nice handle for it uh, that should serve us well today. It's just a friction fit, kind of like a Maddox um, and about, I think that's about the right length. It just seemed about right for me uh, to be, you know, pretty, uh, a pretty useful tool. So let me show you the project that we have today and we'll find out if indeed it is, uh, it, it's worth keeping around. So every year I've got to replace probably about a half a dozen of these rails on our fences around the, around the front of the property. Uh, a lot of them get broken by snow plows. As the snow plow goes by, they fold the snow up over and the weight of the snow crushes them down. Some of them just get old and rot. The first few that I replaced, I used uh, standing dead trees, trees that had, small trees that had died, um, and they didn't last very long. They were already pretty well dried out, um, and I'd get a couple years on, on them and then they'd end up breaking. So I found I've had better luck with green trees. So we're gonna go out here to the, to the uh, the east stand and we'll uh, see if we can find a suitable candidate. So this looks like a suitable candidate. So this is a green tree on the east stand and this is an area that we haven't really thinned out yet. Now people always get so upset when we cut down green trees but what's, what we're doing is that we're, the trees are too thick. We're, we're still repairing the land from some pretty bad logging practices and to thin out these trees, this tree here is not going to thrive because we've got huge mature trees, we've got a very established canopy, there's not a lot of sunlight coming down down in and it's competing with those big trees which it just can't so to thin them out actually makes it better for everyone my granddad was a real competent woodsman and there were two tools that he would always have whenever we went hunting or went out into the forest and that was a small handsaw and a small hatchet he always said and, and I agree today that there's very little that you can't accomplish with these two tools see how it uh, how it works. I do like working with an Oz. The thing with an Oz that's so critical that a lot of guys get wrong, um, that I've, I've had some guys that have sent some to me that they've made and they get that angle wrong. If it's too steep, it doesn't seem to work well. It's really important to have the right angle and the right length of handle or when you come down, it doesn't, it doesn't come into contact, it doesn't bite properly. Pretty good for uh, chopping off limbs. Of course, it's a very weird angle for the side. Usually I like to cut my limbs off on the side like this and this, which it doesn't, but I guess it's all a trade-off. If it were a normal ax and you have to kind of, it doesn't work as well on the top, so it's fine. One thing that'd be interesting is that, is that you have to strip the bark off of here and uh, it might be very effective at that. Can it be used to chop? Can you chop a pole with it? I think you could. Let's try it and see. I don't know how well that's going to be compared to a good hatchet. I'm not expecting this to be a very, very good cutter. I'm just, is it, 
serviceable is it can it be a replacement for or not a replacement but could it work in the same role as a small hatchet or an axe it is sharp we'll give it that so is it a replacement for an axe for chopping like this uh, it's not but it works better than I thought it would. Actually, it works a lot better. The angle on this thing is really good. I think I got the handle just right because when I come down, it, it uh, is at a good angle. It feels very natural. It takes big chunks. Ladies, for your husbands, one of these, uh, these little silky pocket saws. Be careful you get the right teeth. They have a fine tooth, which is more suited for pruning. Then they have a really ultra coarse tooth. That's the best one for just uh, for being in a pack or hunting or bushcrafting. Um, but this is this has definitely been my go-to saw. I really like it. When I was thinking about making this video today, I was going to uh, completely discount the design. But uh, you know, it's actually it's not too bad as far as the design of it. Now the quality and workmanship—that's uh, a whole other thing we'll talk about here in a minute. But uh, overall, it's uh, it's a pretty handy little thing to use. So now we can cut our fence post to length. Or we can go out into the forest and cut another tree because we didn't take a tape measure with us and we cut it too short. Just another opportunity for the good Lord to give me a lesson in patience and humility. This one is way better than the other one anyway. What were we thinking? Before we cut our tenons, we'll have to cut it to length. So what I'll typically do is hang it over the post about, a, about an inch, inch and a quarter or so. And then we'll go over and trim the other side, the small side. Over here on the small end, we'll do the same thing. Trim it to just a little bit of an overhang there. Now we're gonna try out our as, as tool to see if we can cut a a decent uh, tenon with it. Let's try it on for size here. Looks good. Let's see how we did here. See if we can get enough movement on that post. Oh, that's a st stiff one. I might need to trim it a bit. Let's see. Sometimes if you go down, hammer it into position, it might be, we might need to trim that just a little bit. You can always take away, but you can't add. We'll start small. We'll just take a uh, 5 sixteenths or so off of there. So what's my impression of this tool? Well, in all honesty, uh, I didn't, uh, I, I thought it was gonna be a total fail when I, I was kind of thinking about it this morning and um, I knew I had to do this fence to fix and I thought, well, I'll try it and we'll see. But it did a lot better uh, than I thought. It's, um, it's a handy little thing to have around. It's um, to, uh, if you needed to pull some nails, uh, you needed to do some really rough carpentry. I mean, it does a lot of the things that a, it, that a hammer would do. I mean, what it, I guess what it is, is kind of a cross between a framing hammer and a, and a small ax or a hatchet. And so is it a viable tool? Is it something that uh, you should have? Um, 
I don't know, I'd rather have a hammer and I'd rather have a, a hatchet or an ax. Um, just what typically I find with, when you try to ask a tool to, to perform too many rolls, um, what it ends up doing is, is none of them very well. And that's my biggest gripe with the multi-tools, it's kind of that same thing. Um, but not all is, uh, not all is uh, well. Uh, and as I suspect, suspected, uh, it didn't hold up well. Let me show you what I'm talking about. As I kind of expected, this is what most likely is a, a cheap interpretation or, or kind of a ripoff of, of the original forge tool that would have been probably high quality. You can see there with the uh, only thing that we did is we cut off a few branches and we did a little notching, you know, no, nothing that any ordinary hatchet shouldn't be able to handle with ease and the whole tool has failed. Um, it's a super poor quality. Um, some sort of a cast metal and as you know as we go as you see you know steel matters forging matters uh, you can't just um, cast something and expect it to to hold up like a like a properly a proper forged tool so it's um, it's it's a it's useless this particular one here so I would say if you could find an older one uh, maybe one of the forged ones uh, that wasn't a cheap knockoff. Uh, it's probably a pretty handy little tool, something to keep in the truck, and uh, to, especially for doing uh, rough carpentry, rough, rough hewn carpentry. It would be something I would use, but as, as in its current in its current condition, um, it's of no value. It's um, it'll just go in the scrap pile. But that's uh, that's what we got. One last thing, uh, I want to give a shout out uh, to Uber subscriber Ken and his lovely wife Sherry. Uh, Ken is turning 61 today. Now, Ken, don't feel bad about getting old because what I hear is 61 is the new 41. So you've got that to look forward to. So Ken and his wife have been a great blessing to our family and very supportive to the channel. And uh, we want you to know uh, that we're thinking about you. We wish you could have made it to the to the party, but there will be, I have no doubt that we will, we will see you guys uh, in the future soon, Lord willing. So happy birthday to Ken. Um, thank you for uh, being such a blessing to my family. And I hope you have a great day. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next video.